Once you create a view, you may realize that your query had a problem. So you need to go back and change your view. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you two ways to do this. One way is to drop the view and then recreate it. So we can type drop view sales by client. We could also write this in the same query window. It doesn't matter. Let's execute this. Now our view is gone. We can go back to our first query window and execute this statement one more time. So this is one way to recreate the view. The other way is to use the replace keyword. So we can change this create view statement like this, create or replace view. And this is the preferred way because you don't have to explicitly drop a view first. Now we can execute this statement as many times as you want. Now, what if this query window is gone and you don't have access to the query behind this view? Well, a lot of people save their views in SQL files and put these files under source control. It's a very common practice to check these files into a Git repository and then share that repository with other people so everyone can recreate this database on their machine. That's a really good practice. So here we can save this file in a folder called views. And in this folder, we're going to have a file with the same name as the view. That is sales by client. Then we can put that folder under source control. So this is one way. But in case you don't use this in your organization, you can always come back here and click this middle icon. This opens the view in the edit mode. But you can see a bunch of other stuff here that we didn't explicitly code. MySQL added these. But quite honestly, I'm not sure why MySQL does this. But one thing you need to know is that MySQL surrounds your table and column names with this backtick character. And this is to prevent a name clash. So if you use certain keywords that have special meanings in SQL, MySQL would treat those just as table or view or column names. Obviously, this makes your code a little bit convoluted, but that's something you have to deal with. So let's make a small change here. I'm going to add an order by clause, an order by total sales in descending order. When we're done, we need to click the apply button. It's on the bottom right corner of the screen, but unfortunately it's not visible in my recording window. It's right here. So click apply and then MySQL generates a SQL statement like this, create or replace blah, blah, blah. And here we can see the change that we applied. So once again, we apply, done. But obviously this is not the ideal way to update views. As I told you before, as a best practice, you should save your views in SQL files and put them under source control. 